Some people want to have a good phone, good quality, good features, but they don't want to spend all the money they have in their pockets to have it. And that's where we came in. So you guys just launched the Zenfone 5 last night. True. Yeah, and yeah. these are it? They are here. What makes them different from all the other phones on the market? I think this is small little difference that they are evolving from smartphones to intelligent phones. Okay. And that's happened because the AI capabilities we are developing on that. Taking your information and being proactive in terms of what you may need and want. Exactly. It tries to predict what do you want mm. before you want it. And how we find this way? Using AI to predict when you go to bed. So the phone knows when you are sleeping. And it also knows when you're going to wake. And because it knows, can be by the sensors we have inside that we are not moving, or because you set the alarm to wake you up at a certain moment, the phone can charge at 80% the battery during the night. And don't let go over 80%. So the battery don't get stuff of things and don't lose their capability to retain power. That's brilliant. Yeah, and like 15 minutes, 20 minutes before you wake up, it starts to charge again to 100%, so when you wake up, the battery is 100%. Doing that on a daily basis with this feature, we double the lifespan of the battery. So a phone that usually would degrade battery in about two years, three years, uh -huh. now with Zenfone 5 can last up to three, four, six years, depends on how you use it. What other features are in ASUS, the Zenfone 5 right now? I think one of the best is about audio. Audio seems to be huge this year. Audio built within the phone. Okay, and what's great about the audio? Well, we pack two speakers. Each of them, one in the bottom and another one here in the earpiece, mm. they have individual amplifiers. So you have amazing sound come out of both speakers. But we also did in a very smart way because here we cannot put such a big speaker. This, the room here is quite limited. But here we can put something bigger. So all the bass is here. And now the clarity of the voice also is here. But it's a stereo, you have them both, but we give the preference. So you have a very clear audio coming out. But audio is not only the speakers itself, because this is when you're heard here, right? But when you are in the streets, you don't listen music on the streets. Some people do and they're annoying. I know, come on, stop doing that. Please stop doing that. <laughs> but we keep the headphone jack. Uh-huh, thank and you. Yes, come on, this is not that hard, fruit phones. And we, we put a lot of efforts together with DTS to fine-tune from DTS uh, things, to fine-tune several kinds of other brands of headphones to work better with our Zenfone 5. And you can choose what a kind of specific sound you want, if you want pop, rock, if you want something like classical, or you want to just voice better, mm -hmm. or if you just want to custom everything inside the phone in terms of audio. And this is when you plug a headphone, but also a lot of people now is using the Bluetooth headphones. Right. And this is a different approach, right? So on, on the headphones through Bluetooth, we also have DTS-X over there, which is amazing because it, it, it can do the 7.1 virtual surround, and it's amazing, like it's immersive. Mm. So you can do that because different data is going through the air in those kind of uh, wireless phones than you have on the plug-in phones. Some of the other features, the dual camera, why is that an important feature? Whoa, we have a lot of researchers on that. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, we took a different path than vast majority of the competitors we have in the market. We choose for the wide-angle camera as a second camera. Okay. Uh, usually they use the zoom camera, uh -huh. we call telephoto, right? Um, the reason why is because when you have a zoom camera, and we have phones in the past with zoom, Mm -hmm. We did this in the past. You can do zoom with any phone. You can do the digital zoom. And two times, three times, you don't lose too much quality because the new sensors are so good that doing this kind of zoom, especially for social networks, it's more than enough to keep the quality and post a picture. So actually adding the telephoto for zoom doesn't bring you something really new or something you can't do before. Okay. But when you add the wide angle, you enlarge your word. You add more things to the picture, to the, and you can frame more, actually. So that's the trick. One thing we are doing here for the first time 
You know when you have those portrait pictures? Yeah. Do you know how it works? It can be only software or it can be hardware and software together. Okay. When you have hardware and software together, it's much better results. To do that, you have to align both cameras in a very precise direction. So you have to frame it. They occupy more room. They will have to remove something else to put this over there and it's more expensive. But when you do that, they can measure the difference and the distance of angle from this camera to this camera and do the perfect crop. Uh -huh. So they know what is behind you. When you use telephoto, the zoom image will be your face. Uh -huh. And the other main camera that has the best sensor will be the background that will be blurred. blurred. But we did the opposite. We used the wide-angle camera to do the blur because actually this camera is not so good as the main camera. And we use the main camera that can capture more light and have more details to capture your face on the portrait. So actually, the portraits on Zenfone 5, for the first time, will be much better than any competitor. So you're telling me that the, the camera that's focusing on the subject is the better camera versus the wide-angle camera, which is the blurred background. Exactly. That seems more intuitive to me. I know you guys aren't afraid to do a little comparison with the iPhone 10. This looks very similar with a bigger screen, of course. Uh, so, so obviously that's one feature that's superior. Any other features that are comparable? Well, everybody talks about the notch, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, notch is a trend. And, and not long ago, if you go back for companies that disregard trends, there is one that said, I don't want to remove my physical keyboards from my phones. I'm going to stick with that. And there's another one that said, I will never put Android in my phones. And what happened to those companies? I don't hear yeah. about them anymore. Yeah, so they become really small because they don't follow what people want. That's what trends are about. So we want to deliver to people what they want, but not at the insane prices they have today in the market. I think the key here is, some people want to have a good phone, good quality, good features, but they don't want to spend all the money they have in their pockets to have it. And that's where we came in. Another buzzword we're hearing at Mobile World Congress, and also at CES, is 5G. 5G phones. What does that mean for the consumer? I think when we move from one technology to another technology, right, from 3G to 4G, from uh, gigabit LTE to 5G, uh -huh. um, consumer may think only about the speed. Maybe the speed will be better. Maybe the connection will be better. Uh, but actually, there is much more than that over there. There is uh, power consumption differences. There is uh, uh, the, what we call all-time connected and seamless uh, roaming. Those things are completely different. Even the uh, voice over LTE is quite interesting. And 5G is incorporated on the whole thing. So those things improve not only the quality of the sound when you're talking to someone, but also, you keep all the time connected, oscillation is much lower. If oscillation is much lower in signal, that means the battery of the phone will last longer. So there are so many good things about 5G, but it's still a little bit far for us to reach because the infrastructure must be ready first. Exactly, yeah. So we are waiting for the infrastructure to be ready, then 5G phones will become a reality. And this is 5G enabled? Not yet. Not yet. So Not the yet. next generation of next this Next generation, be. maybe, if the infrastructure is ready. The, the cameras, they have about 50 to 60 degrees angle in the past. Now they are 80 to 85 degrees, which is much more area to capture. Uh -huh. And we have a new phone, the Zenfone 5 Lite. There is four cameras, two in the front, two in the back. From those two in the front, one of them are wide angle with 120 degrees, so we can capture a lot. But if you had to make a guess of how many selfies you have right now? Oh my God, I don't know. Give me a number. I uh, don't know, maybe, I took too many pictures actually, maybe 50%. 50% selfies? Yeah. Wow. We did a research with Ipsos, um, and we figured out that the front camera today is more used than the back camera. Mm -hmm. And there is like three different areas for that. The first one is when you are taking pictures that you want to see yourself on the picture. The second one is you want to include your friends on the picture and see how it looks like. Yeah. And the third one is communication when you are talking to someone via a video call or when you are sending a video message. So you use the front camera to watch yourself what you are doing if you are in the frame of these things. So actually the front camera right now is becoming more important than the back camera. 
Yeah, I agree. I hardly ever use the back camera. Yeah. And when you think ASUS, it really depends on what your interests are, but you have gaming division, you have a PC division, you have mobile division. What are some of the common trends that you're seeing this year across all the divisions? Oh, AI is a big one. Yeah. Coming to, I think it starts with smartphones because they collect a lot of data and then we can create something new with this data. Mm -hmm. And notebooks now, they are looking to those things you're developing for smartphones and say, hey, how can we do something similar? Or how can we create something that goes in the same direction? And I think this is a matter of time, short time to be honest, to see a lot of AI things we're doing in smartphones, mm -hmm. not only ASUS but many others, going to other products like PCs, notebooks, smart speakers, those things are happening everywhere. Um, gaming is a very different scenario though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can see some AI happening on gaming, but in a very, very tricky way. Because gaming has to be fair when you're mm. playing with someone else, right? So you cannot provide tools for one side only and the other side being right, at disadvantage when you yeah. have like eSports or something like this. But if you're playing to yourself, you want to take advantage of something, the best way you can do is have the best hardware. So at least you are super fresh on the screen rate, ratio or, or what's happening on the game. You can see a little bit before than others or better than the others. Those things are important for sure. But I think on gaming is more about how can you deliver better performance, controlling the thermal parts. Yeah. Those things also are very, very important on smartphones. And we are seeing a kind of convergence in smartphones. Some people want to see gaming phones. Yeah, is that something that still yeah. works here? We, we are working something, yes, oh, for a long okay. time already. It's a big, big discussion, okay. but I cannot comment much further than that. Yeah.